What's, What's up, up everybody? everybody? Welcome back to our channel. Julio and Jose figure it out. I'm Julio. And I'm Jose. And this is part two of our Q&A video. Where we answered your questions. Come on! <laughs> Forever in your heart. Julio, what have been the challenges of starting a new business while traveling abroad? Definitely the biggest challenge has been sticking to schedule. Um, we obviously don't work a regular, you know, clock in type of schedule. Um, getting clients? Getting clients, you know, and marketing has been difficult. But um, it's going to be a challenge no matter where we are. It's just hard to stay indoors. And, you know, when we're in another country, you just want to be outside. And if we could be honest, us doing this YouTube channel has been our main focus to kind of spark having more clients come. And so we could help with, you know, with our business or help them with their business. But, you know, get more clientele through our YouTube channel. So we're hoping, you know, the more we do this, the more we spark people interested in using our services, you know. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But that's been the, definitely been the biggest challenge. Alrighty. So in honor of this question, we're going to cheers our pineapple skin tea. So it's just tea made from pineapple skins. That's all it is. So cheers. Cheers. To you. To you. <laughs> and to you viewers. Okay. So next question. Where did you meet? Meaning us. Where do we meet and how long have we been together? Tell the people. So, the crazy story is uh, we met on Tinder <laughs> back in 2014 when it was, it was it, I guess it was already out, but we met when it was at its highest peak yeah. and when it was pretty much new, like everybody was using it. So, we, I was stationed, I was in the Air Force, I was stationed at Patrick Air Force Base and he was in Orlando, so we met online that way. And so we've been together going on nine years now. Yep. In December, we make nine years. <laughs> it's We were talking about it the other day, and we, I, don't, I still can't believe yeah. it's been that long. Like it, it definitely does feel like it's been that long, but it doesn't feel like it's been that long at all. So, yeah, it's great. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> hey, guys. Us again. So, Julio, uh, question 13. Safety and acceptance of LGBTQIA plus couples in Colombia and Peru. So, um, first and foremost, Colombia and Peru are Catholic countries, so Catholic society. However, um, couples are able to get married in both countries. Legal. It's legal. So, um, but again, keeping in mind that it is a Catholic society. We found that most people allow you to be yourself. You see some couples that are you know, holding hands, have their arms around each other. Um, but in general, there's not much PDA. Um, it's Everybody's kind of just respectful of each other. And everybody allows everybody to um, fill the space that they're in. And that's something that's actually been really beautiful being out here in South America. Is being able to just be and not have people infringing upon our space or our time because they don't like the t-shirt we're using or wearing or they don't want us barbecuing in the public space that's for barbecues so <laughs> to the next question you'll notice that he's calling out the numbers but we're kind of going out of order because when we started answering questions we realized that some of these could be answered the or... number was more for me so i know which question i was reading my so so i just wanted to call that out because it could be confusing and somebody was like wait 13 we're having to do the others it it's we're ju we're kind of jumping around no we're jumping around and so don't worry we're, we're in the right order <laughs> so the next question uh is what are some things that we loved and some things that we didn't like so much about Colombia? The things I loved about Colombia is one, the people. The people are so hospitable. Incredible. They greet you the moment you wake up. They're just <laughs> ready. Buenas. I'm like, buenas. Hi. 
Like, I love it. I love it. And then to the mountains, you're surrounded by nothing but mountains. So anywhere you look, you're going to be, you're going to see a mountain. So that's been breathtaking. So, yeah. And I guess, I guess maybe something that we didn't like so much was how many times we were almost killed by motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. oh. not, not literally almost killed, right? yeah. but it's crazy with the motorcycles down there. So that's something and how loud they were. Oh, my gosh. That's something that I, I, I probably would like a little bit more quiet, but noise. Okay. Yeah, like no Seriously. no white noise machine could have prepared me for that. Right, and then <laughs> one thing I didn't like, but I got used to, was the humidity. It's just really hot because a lot of these buildings and Airbnbs and apartments they don't have AC. And on the opposite, I loved the humidity. You didn't have to wear much clothing. You know, I sweat a lot, so it was nice to. I was always able to feel like fresh and cool. You know, it's something you you adjust to. Yeah, you definitely have to adjust. All right, Julio. Next question: Is there anything we wish we would have done in Colombia? Yes, we didn't get to do the cable cars. Oh, and that was something that we really really wanted. wanted, I really wanted to do it too. Yeah, we are, and you know, (laughs) we've talked about this actually a couple of times um, about how we really wish we would have been able to. Well, can you explain to them? Because I think we explained. I don't know one episode, but. They have cable, like what the cable cars are. Right? Well, well, the cable cars is it's, to, it's a little cable car, and it allows you to go from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. So, like typical every other cable car you can find around the world. But <laughs> but no, but, but it literally goes. But you go to one side to to another side. Right, and we just we didn't get to do it. Yeah, but but they're on totally opposite sides of the yeah. city. And I heard you could do ATVs. I didn't get yeah. to see, but right. uh, this but. There's so many things that we wish we could have done, um, but that just like really confirms that we plan to go back. Right, we do. So yeah. next question is, it's about this guy. And the question is, how has Luca adjusted to being an international dog? What do you think, Luca? Did you get that? Mm, interesting. No. <laughs> we'll answer for him. I think at first, when we went to Columbia, I think it was an adjustment. Um, just because uh, he, I, to me, I felt like he, he felt that he was in a different place. Um, Colombia was, there's a lot of terrain and there's a lot of areas where there's not a lot of grass. So that was something he had to adjust to, like when going outside and using the bathroom, he had to adjust to like going on leaves and just branches and, you know, just stuff like that. Like in the forest. Right. Like, cause there was only like pockets or patches of grass around Col- in the city of Medellin. So, and in Peru, I think he's loving it cause there's parks everywhere. Yeah, I think the biggest change for him has been this extreme shift in our lifestyle. Um, in Florida, we had family and friends that we visited with a lot. They have dogs, and we took him to the dog parks a lot out here. There's not so many. There are dog parks here, but not so many in the area where we are. And we didn't find many in Colombia. At least people didn't use them when we found the one. But I think that's been the biggest thing is him adjusting to us not hanging with our family and friends anymore and he had his little doggy friends and family that you know we hung out with so i think that's also been a big thing but he's gotten a lot of our time so he's been with us pretty much the whole time we've been out here doing things we'll take him with us walk him with us so he's yeah he's although in most of the videos that we posted you don't see him as much um for every video you don't see him in you know there's days of it's literally just us with him so uh he definitely does a lot of things and he's definitely got him out but i I think he's adjusting pretty well because the three of us get to be together but i think it has definitely been a shock for him but he's been such a trooper as long as he's with us that's all that matters that's all he cares about yeah, he's the best. It's our last question. The last Are you... one. The last one. Okay. <laughs> Julio, being vegan slash vegetarian while traveling, what has been the biggest obstacle you have faced to continue this lifestyle? I'm going I'm included in that now, kind of. Whatever. <laughs> um. So the biggest obstacle. Let's see. The best way I can say is if you've ever had Colombian food or if you've ever been to a Peruvian restaurant or tried Peruvian food, think about your most, the, the best dish that you've had, like ceviche, you know, red snapper, mahi, salmon, sushi, if you know, you know, in Peru. 
um, in Colombia, the chicharron, you know, salchipapas, the hot dogs, the burgers, you know, think about your favorite foods from these places. And then think about all the goodness that I can't eat. I can't have none of that stuff. I don't eat any of that stuff. I don't eat any, any meat, you know, there's no seafood. Um, so it's 100% been a challenge because I think the cornerstone of these cultures is their food. And I have not really bought me. Yes, lots yeah. of me. I mean, if you had a bandeja yes, paisa, but that's because we know we're, that's Latin culture. Latin general. culture. So it's been difficult because I, in a sense, I have not been able to participate in certain aspects of the culture here. You know, sitting at the table is, if you know, you know, as a cultural experience in itself. Luckily, we found incredible vegan restaurants. I love to cook and explore and experience with food. So I have gone to markets and made us different things and made Colombian food. And, you know, we've tried the different stuff they have here. And so um, well, I've it, been well, able to. Give yourself credit because in Colombia, you we ate a lot of bandeja paisas. Yeah, I mean, they offer, most places offer an option, some kind of option, you know, to, to so it's cl- inclusive. Yeah. Um, so that, that's been great. But it, that, that's just been the biggest challenge in no matter how bad I might want to have some chicharron, I, I can't have any chicharron. You can have it with a head. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, that, I think that's just been the biggest thing is having to miss out of very typical traditional dishes. Apart from that, um, co- the society in Colombia and society in Peru are very supportive of individuals who are plant-based. So if you are plant-based, you know, and you want to travel, know that there are plenty of options for you um, to open it up even more. I recommend cooking. Yeah. All right. Well, we made it to all our questions. We did it. And this has been, this has been a lot of fun. I, and- I, I, I wish it kind of feels like you're sitting here at the other side of the well, table. Julio, <laughs> well, Julio, let's, well, before we end it, Julio started this by posing on Instagram like questions that you guys wanted to hear, you know? So, and our family has been asking us since we've been gone. Right. So it's been hard shout to out be a my family because some of these questions came from them. Yeah. You know, so, shout out to everybody who yeah. sent us questions. This has been really, really awesome. We hope that you feel like you're hanging right. out with us because I think that's the biggest thing. Just we want. You're like you're hanging out with right. us and this is not going to be the last q a so we'll definitely have another one yes again like in the beginning if you have any other questions that we didn't yeah. ask put in the comments put in the comments make below. sure you hit that notification bell you subscribe you like shameless plug shameless plug <laughs> <laughs> because but, we need 500 subscribers and 3,000 watch hours guys oh come on. quick update on that um let's look at our numbers since we have you and we got a little bit of time before we sign off. Yeah. Shout out to everybody who's been following along with us and um, supporting us. We're looking to become part of the YouTube partner. And you need 500 subscribers and 3,000 watch hours. And I'm just going to pull it up really quick. So we're going to start monetizing. So we're trying to monetize our YouTube channel. Yeah, you know, make it worth our while. Because make it worth your while. Video, you know, so, enjoy. so let's see. So today, whoops. Today, we have... 191 subscribers we have 191 subscribers so almost 200 that's one more closer to 500 thank you for supporting us it really really means so much thank you we love you guys and we're gonna continue making these videos consistent every friday yes we love you see you next week see you next time and remember if we love ourselves we know we can believe in ourselves We know you can believe in yourself too. Amen. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Post new videos every Friday. So we are on question number 10. Okay, Julio. What? Wait, hold on. Sorry. Question number 11. Where did you meet? Wait. What? We start over. Number nine. Okay. Take it. Hold on. Get your question. Okay. Can you start over? No, just get it from there. Okay. So. Thank you.